Good morning and welcome to Atlanta, Georgia. We're here at Supercomputing 2024. My name's Savannah Peterson. Very excited to kick off this show with my favorite comrades, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Gentlemen, yeah. how nice to be here today. How you doing? Third, Thank Seth. You. Third year uh, covering the show, watching it transform to AI is awesome. And I think it's turning into industry shows we had predicted last year. Yeah. Uh, and the guest list is rocking this year. We're going to have tons of awesome people. And it's, it's again, continues. NVIDIA continues to do its thing. AWS is here. We have Cerebrus founder coming on. Dell's, Dell's got, got a got huge booth. Tons of people. Dell's got an AI factory here. They have yeah. an actual trailer. They brought the factory, Dave. So uh, that should be fun. Ooh, check I'm going to go check that out. Kristen Nicole's here. She's going to do some behind the scenes. Um, so, yeah, it should be great. I was watching your preview. This show started in 1980. Eight, 1988. 88. No, 1988, sorry. But in the 80s, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, exactly. It's, 30 it's as old years. as you are, but yeah. that's not old. And... Uh, Thanks, but, but but wow, what a show! I mean, it reminds me, it's like almost maybe bigger than GTC, yeah, which was insane. Yeah. It's uh, over thirty thousand people here this week, which is pretty powerful. One of the things that I really like about this show, and and you can see it, we'll have to get some B-roll so everyone can see it, is the intersection between government, academia, and and enterprise. And I don't think you get the overlap of that at too many shows. It's it's just not that common. So it, it shows you about the collaboration. We saw in the keynote this morning, it was NASA up there. They were talking about open science and the value of opening up their tools and their data sets and for for space exploration yeah. across the board. It's actually, it's pretty interesting. John, we were here last year together in Denver, I believe it was. Yeah, it was Denver. What do you think is going to be the biggest difference between last year and this year? I, mean, I think the big difference last year was kind of like the... Um stake in the ground that the shift, the shift is happening and from an industry standpoint that show has turned into an AI show. I think this year as you're starting to see real build out around the infrastructure hardware and where hardware is turning into systems. Um, I was talking to folks at Broadcom last night, Cerebras and a bunch of the shift folks and the, there's a new level of builder emerging. It's the classic hyperscalers on the high end. We all know who they are. Meta, AWS, Azure. They're getting the big orders in from in, on the GPUs and the components. Then you got the enterprise, like the Dells, the HPEs, they're like gonna put, embed their devices and systems, obviously servers, they control the IT. But there's a new class emerging, I call the integrators. It used to be around doing kind of either working with super micros of the world, people mm -hmm. who built their own white boxes, we covered that wave. This new integration of these builders are doing between 100 and 300 million in revenue. They're the ones who are actually building these new systems. So the Broadcoms and the chip guys are targeting these new builders because they're going to come into the enterprise and build it because if you want to own the software game, you got to build your own PC, you got to build your own servers and then connect it to the cloud. So I think this year the conversation is supercomputing is democratized thanks to NVIDIA's messaging and all their work. But now the computers on premise, the data center technologies have to be rebuilt and then connected to the cloud for customization. So I think this year will be the year, uh, the era of clustered systems on premise edge where it's just the system that's going to matter. So I think this year will be marked as, okay, game is on, real solutions are coming out, AI PCs with H100 is going to be there, we have one here in the booth. Um, you're going to start to see the game change, and the era's here. The chapter's closed, the old IT's over, and the new systems are coming in. So nothing gets done until the hardware gets built and the software can run on it, and then that'll just explode the whole agentic I issue. I think the timing is interesting too, because Blackwell's just starting to get out there. I've walked around the floor, yeah. I've seen several Blackwell's, and NVIDIA announces earnings tomorrow. Mm -hmm. the, the, the new Blackwell's are melting racks, right? Yeah. I've seen that. So there's a whole you know challenge of how do you cool these things. Big I mean, liquid cooling is now week. back in a big way. And mm -hmm. so we've got a panel this afternoon on, on di direct liquid cooling, and we have one of the, the foremost experts in the field coming on talk about phase change, and there's a big debate about whether or not that can scale, so you know we're going to tee that up. So it's super exciting. You know, back in my IDC days, which was years ago, uh, the High Performance Computing Group reported to me, it was run, I didn't run it, it was run by somebody named De Deborah Goldfarb, she was amazing. She was always telling me how eventually this world is going to go mainstream and be like, yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. and it's taken you know 20 plus years, but now it's really here. Yeah. I mean, it I is going. Say, looking around. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I would say this definitely qualifies. <laughs> no 
No question your point about just enterprise and governments and yeah, commercial and, and, and all the research that comes together too from the academic side is fantastic. I mean, we're looking at the Department of Energy here right yeah. across from the booth. Yeah, and speaking of energy, I tweeted last night with a little, the hot technology this year, and I put a picture of uh, the cooling because you brought up uh, the cooling because there's air cooling, there's uh, liquid cooling, and then there's on-chip cooling like JetCool we've interviewed on the NYSE, and the cooling brings up the density problem. You're seeing a lot more dense chips on the stuff and these clustered systems. So the sustainability and how do I figure out the compute resource and cost? So you're going to see a lot of kind of in the weeds conversation around the sustainability equation, okay? Because you know things are melting because the old way of doing racks is, is broken, right? So everything old has to get retrofitted. So you know energy, power, cooling, these things are Literally hot. Well, they're pushing, they're, 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 nice we're one. seeing, they're pushing nice the envelope, we're pushing yeah. the technology to new limits. Yeah, And of course, absolutely. NVIDIA publishes its roadmap, you know, it's very transparent what they're doing. And, you know, things are breaking and yeah. that's kind of exciting actually, because yeah. this industry has a great track record of fixing things that are broken and then extending that roadmap uh, to keep, keep yeah. the whole train moving. Well, we're, we're at that inflection point. I think, you know, we've been talking about when are we going to make AI real? When are we going to start realizing some of this high performance computing gains in terms of the world, not just in terms of prototypes? And I think if we're at the point where we're melting racks and we've got this this type of a conversation going on, I mean, that means that means innovation is moving at at light speed or at, at a super hot speed, which is it's exciting. I mean, it, it's as someone who's been a hardware nerd their whole life. This is, I, I feel like hardware is having its moment. I feel like we're getting, I can't wait to go look around and check out all the booths and all the different displays. One of the things that's cool just for folks at home that you might not know that's really unique about this show is there is there is huge pieces of multi-million dollar hardware on display everywhere. So it's not just talking about software or showing some demos. There's full on racks, there's liquid cooling demos, there's steam going up. I've saw a lot of fun stuff walking in. Yeah. And, so it really is an opportunity, not just to talk about the tech, but to understand how it works, to see yeah. examples of it. I'm curious because two years ago when I joined y'all here, we were talking, uh, it was about 50-50 between cooling and supercomputing and quantum as was a big conversation. Then last year we barely talked about yeah. quantum at all. Yeah. And, and so I'm curious to see what the dialogue becomes this year and whether or not that's going to be yeah. a conversation. Yeah. If, if our, our focus on AI has just made everybody loving NVIDIA chips and, and that's what I think quantum's definitely going to happen. That's not going to dominate this year because it's still out there, but IBM and others see it coming fast because yeah. the first order of businesses get the clustered systems up and running because you got to power the software. Right. Jensen Wong just gave a speech um, in uh, Asia he talked about how, okay, the supercomputing is coming into the enterprise and then I'll see these large scale racks. And he made a point and said, if the software can't run first generation hardware, then that's job one. And he also said that operating at scale, that and that's why they're building their dedicated racks, because they can see stuff at scale that no one else can see. And AWS has the same approach with their cloud. They're running at scale. They see things that no one else sees. So that's going to give the software better reliability. And that'll also trickle down into the the enterprise and these other apps, but the quantum is definitely coming because there's use cases emerging once they get the NIST standard figured out around encryption. Yeah. Because everyone's scared of encryption hacking. So, you know, I mean, I think the innovations in the data center is going to be this year's theme. Quantum's right around the corner. The app frameworks is going to be key too. So that's going to be like, how does the data work and how do I run the agentic systems? And I mean, I mean, you're right about the app framework, but we are still sort of geeking out in the hardware phase. I just want to go back, you were at the IBM analyst yeah. meeting with, with, with me and a bunch of us. Arvind Krishna said quantum is going to be big, but not for 24 to 36 months. Now I've, I've used that line with a lot of industry experts and they're like, nah, that's too aggressive. But I like the fact that IBM- Aggressive as in early. Yes, yeah, aggressive as in early. But what, what I think IBM has responded is, look, it's going to be a hybrid initially. Yeah. You're going to have a yeah, hybrid yeah. of quantum and, and von Neumann computing architectures to run existing applications, and some of the new apps are going to be running on, on quantum. That's another leapfrog. He, said, he's, he basically said, he said it's, it's, the growth is you know, potentially infinite. I mean, it's just unbelievable what's going to happen with quantum. Well, I think once we hit that tipping point, I actually love that ambitious 24 to 36 months. I, I think right. that could be that could be early, but we're seeing this the, this adoption curve. We actually, you know, we were at KubeCon last week, Cloud CloudNativeCon, and looking at the adoption of Kubernetes and the and the acceleration of AI. And I mean, everything's going like this. So I think, I don't know, you know, I, everyone focusing on higher performance computing may lead to that 
yeah. acceleration of quantum popping out. And I mean, I mean, quantum. I think the I think quantum is probably won't be dominated. It's, it's storage, networking, and compute is the dominant. Inference, obviously, is, is comes after training. I think there's going to be a lot of conversations about inference this week. Inference, it's yeah, yeah exactly. It. Yeah. Well, so there's a lot of conversation, too, about the scaling laws hitting a wall. There are people saying they're not hitting a wall. There are people are saying they are hitting the wall. Um, training, you, you know, becomes, uh, you know, secondary in terms of the dominant workload to, to inference. I think they're both going to be huge. I do. And I think that... Look at you, an egalitarian. I, 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 I believe it. I think... You know, when you look at the scaling laws, so basically what we're talking about is compute, data, and parameters have to scale together. Yeah. And I just think, you know, yeah. there, are, there are conversations that the industry's running out of data, which I find hilarious, but they'll build synthetic data yeah. and they'll apply private data. And, and now, is that going to be used to train these giant LLMs? No, but they will use synthetic data. So I think it continues and, and the relevance is it just keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter. <laughs> And we well, can cool it. I mean, to your point, I don't, I, I don't know that I think we're going to run out of beta. But I, I mean, looking at the keto today, NASA up there, they're anticipating by 2029, they're going to be processing 500 petabytes of data. And, and that's open science data about our solar system. It's a lot of data. Yeah, so this is interesting because this, I'm glad you brought that up because the, the conversation is we're running out of, of public data to train on. But now you just introduced space. Yeah, right. And what about infinite data? Oceanic exploration. Yeah. Oh, right? exactly. And so, and that's going to be public data, and then again, bring synthetic data into it. Now, will that synthetic data be able to replicate J.P. Morgan's data? No, right. Uh, but it might make up some interesting, you know, scenarios that can yeah. then go into training. So Jensen makes the point. He goes, "Look, you need both. You need training and inference. It's not like training just goes away, and so it's right. this virtuous cycle." Well, and not everyone's going to need to train every single new model. I mean, we're going to, we don't need to reinvent the wheel every single time we're building. This was a huge conversation last week in Utah. I, and it doesn't also have to be my personal private data. I would much rather it was trained on open science data or that we were learning from things like that. I think there's a lot of different avenues. One of the things I love about high performance computing is it touches every aspect of our lives from healthcare yeah. to finance, to, to the climate, to the planet, to science and research. I mean, there's really, nothing that this doesn't impact from a human perspective, yeah. which is why I'm so excited to yeah. share the week with yeah. you both yeah. and to have all the conversations with our fabulous guests this week. Yeah, this looking forward is, to yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be great. It's going to be great. You are not going to want to miss our three days of coverage here in Atlanta, Georgia. We're at Supercomputing 2024. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.